What's up everybody? Matty McCatty back with some quick movie reviews for you. So I've got three movies that I've watched today and I'm going to review every single one of them in quick succession. So, let's go with the first movie, Gold. Gold stars Matthew McConaughey and is based on a real life story about some gold miner guys from like the 1990s. Despite some really bad reviews coming from critics about this movie, I actually really, really enjoyed it. I actually found it a lot better than some other movies that are in the similar kind of vein, like Wolf of Wall Street or Black Mass. Matthew McConaughey, as per usual, has absolutely knocked this one out of the park. You know, ever since he revitalised his career, he's been doing absolutely fantastic, and this movie is no exception. Besides him, everyone else in the cast is pretty good, but I couldn't really pick out any standout performers from any of those really, but they all did contribute everything that they had to to the story to make it work, and the story overall is just really, really interesting, and you know, if you don't know what actually happened with the true life thing that went on, then, like I didn't, I knew nothing about it going in, uh, it actually made the film so much more enjoyable because I didn't know what was actually going to happen. So if you're going to go and see it, and I really suggest you do because it's great, don't read up anything about it or about what it's about. Just go and see it. It's about gold miners essentially, uh, but really it focuses on Matthew McConaughey's character and if you know anything about what Matthew McConaughey's been doing in the last few years, you know that it's just going to be amazing. Pretty sure the movie was directed by Stephen Gagan and he actually did a really terrific job. The movie is well shot and just well directed, well acted. It's an absolute great thing to watch. So I'd have to definitely give it 90 wee gold nuggets out of 100. Definitely a must watch for all of you. Definitely check it out. Second movie I saw today was T2 Train Spotting. Now let's get this one out of the way first because this is something that's kind of annoyed me in every single time I've seen the posters. Why is it called T2 Train Spotting? Now I understand they want to call it Train Spotting because they want to obviously link it with the first film, which some people may have forgot because it came out like 20 fucking years ago. But T2, for me T2 is always going to be Terminator 2. You know, so calling it T2 Train Spotting just kind of confuses me. The book it's supposed to be based on is called Porno. I can understand why they wouldn't want to use that title, but just fucking call it Train Spotting 2. Why do you have to call it T2? I mean, what's the fucking point in that? I just don't get the thinking. Doesn't diminish from the movie, to be fair. It's just something that kind of annoyed me as a little thing. I get annoyed by stupid shit, just fucking ignore me. So T2 Train Spotting is the long-awaited sequel to Train Spotting, and it stars pretty much the same cast from the first film, barring a few exceptions, you know, like people who died in the first film or have died in the interim between films. So you've got Ewan McGregor, Robert Carlyle, and then a bunch of other people who aren't as famous, whose names I can't fucking remember because the only thing I've actually seen them in is uh, train spotting. Besides the guy that plays Ewan McGregor's dad in the film, because he's been in a lot of stuff. Like, he was in Game of Thrones and he was in Braveheart, so he's just been in tons of shit. So he's another recognisable person. But other than that, you know, most of the people are just sort of, they maybe do local stuff. And that's probably about all they really do. Unless it's just shit I haven't watched. In which case, sorry guys, uh, make better programmes or something. So Trainspotting 2 was really good. It had a lot of the same stuff in it that really made the, the first one great. You know, it, it was funny, it had character, the story was reasonably original. The only thing it really lacked compared to the first one was the sort of edginess that the first one had. You know, the first movie was all about junkies and drugs and crime and shit like that. And this one just doesn't have that same edge. A lot of the emotion is missing as well. In the first film you have some really emotional, sort of serious moments, particularly like when Tommy dies and the, the baby dies. But those sorts of moments are just kind of missing from the film. It leaves it a, a little bit flat. The story is also a little bit baffling. You know, it's been 20 years since the first film happened and it's just a bit weird to me that after 20 years all of these characters still hold a grudge and they get so worked up about what happened. You know, it's like 
It's been 20 years. Let it the fuck go. You know, I've had shit that happened to me like a year ago and I don't give a fuck about it. Despite all of that, it's actually a really great film. Uh, the humour is absolutely still there. All of these guys are still just so hilariously funny. And the style of the film as well is really similar to the first film. And that style just really makes the film really quite cool. It's really interesting to watch and it's just a really good experience. It's just not as good as the first one, which, let's be honest, it never was going to be. The acting in the film is pretty good. Ewan McGregor does what he sort of normally does. You know, he's decent, but he's not really fantastic in the film. The best performer in it is definitely Robert Carlyle by far. He just knows, you know, how to get into the mind of a fucking psycho, and he just plays that character absolutely brilliantly every time. Also a special mention for the guy that plays Spud, because he's just great in that again, uh, so he's just really good at what he does. Another thing that sort of is a complaint, but also is something that I liked about the film at the same time, is all of the nostalgia. You know, a big part of the movie is sort of looking at the flashbacks of the characters. Some of them are actually new, so it's like stuff when they're kids and stuff like that. Uh, but a lot of it is flashbacks from the last film to sort of bring to light sort of what's going on and help explain why they're doing what they're doing just now. For a huge fan of the first movie like myself, that's kind of cool because it's, you know, linking it all in and you kind of look at it in some different ways. But at the same time, I feel like the movie just relies far too heavily on it. It's almost like the film can't really have much of a plot of its own without referring to these things. And that kind of lets it down a little. For someone like myself who's from Scotland and has sort of seen this movie a lot, this nostalgia stuff really isn't all that necessary. I can understand wanting it for like American audiences and things like that uh, because sort of without it, they'd probably just be lost. I mean, it has been 20 years, so I do get that. But at the same time, I just wish that all that sort of nostalgia stuff wasn't necessary. But the fact of the matter is that it really is because without it, you don't really have much of a plot. Despite that, the movie was really funny. It was really enjoyable to watch. It had me hooked the entire time. Uh, the story might not be that original is tied into sort of the, the first film, but because you've got all that nostalgic stuff, uh, it makes it flow sort of nicely. I would definitely have to give Train Spotting about three quarters of an ounce of heroin. Uh, it was good, but just not as good as the first one. And now for the third film I'm going to review, Resident Evil The Final Chapter. All I've got to do now is actually go see the film, so I'll be right back. After I've seen it, I'll give you guys a review. Sure. Well, that was a big steamy pile of shit. So I'm just back from seeing Resident Evil, the final chapter, and I'll be honest, it was bad. Yeah, it was pretty fucking bad. I mean, to be fair, I did enjoy it a lot. Uh, I'm a huge Resident Evil fan. I do enjoy the movies, and I'm a fucking huge fan of the games, uh, apart from 6, that was a colossal bag of dog shit, but this movie was definitely better than that. So the movie stars Mila Jovovich once again playing Alice, hopefully for the last time, and Ian Glenn as the crazy founder of Umbrella. So there's not a whole lot I can say about this movie that would be new. Uh, for the Resident Evil franchise. It's pretty much the same as every other Resident Evil movie. The characters and their dialogue are overacted and cheesy. The plotline is ridiculous. And the fucking cinematography is boring. The Resident Evil movies have been a bit hit or miss when it comes to things like cinematography. Uh, this one's definitely a miss. Everything's just dark and gloomy. When there are action scenes, you can't really tell what's going on because of the darkness and the gloom, and also because of a lot of jump cuts and close-ups and things like that. You just really can't tell what's going on. Which is a huge disappointment, because the last film, despite being a bad film, I mean, all the Resident Evil films are, it actually had some really awesome action scenes in it. Action scenes that would make any kind of movie be jealous because they were just really well coordinated and shot really well. But this just completely lacks that entirely. No real new characters are introduced to the plot, not ones from the games anyway. The only ones that are sort of introduced are basically just zombie fodder. You know, they're there to be killed and make the zombies and that look scary. Uh, the real story is basically between Alice and Ian Glenn's character. 
And I don't know if my memory is sort of fading on me here, because I've watched these movies quite a few times, but I'm pretty sure that they basically take a few of the plot lines from the older films and just throw them away as if they never happened, and just completely reinvent the plot line just so that it fits the story that he's decided to have this time, which is annoying for a franchise, but at the same time, it's Resident Evil, it's Paul W.S. Anderson directing, and I really just do not expect any better. To sum up, the acting was cheesy, the action was shit, the cinematography was shit, the story was shit, and the experience was kind of shit. But overall, I enjoyed it anyway. So I'd have to give this an honest rating of about 13 Alice clones out of 50. It was bad, but enjoyable for me because I'm a fan of the franchise. I definitely don't recommend going to see it in the cinema if you're planning on actually paying money to see a film. But if you're like me and you've got an unlimited card, then fucking knock yourself out. Otherwise, just wait until it comes out on Blu-ray or even then, just wait until it comes on TV or something because it's bound to because that's not the kind of movie that's going to sell DVDs because, you know, it's shit. So that's all the movie reviews for today. I saw Gold, I saw T2 Train Spotting, and I seen Resident Evil, the final chapter. If you like these reviews and you want to see some more, check out the videos on my channel, or wait till the end of this video where there'll be some videos that pop up on your screen. Also, hit that old subscribe button, and hit the wee bell as well, so if you want notifications of when my videos go live, you'll get them. I have no idea how it delivers them, it might be email. I have no idea because I've not actually used it. And also, hit an old thumbs up at the bottom too, and add this to your favourites, and add it to a bunch of playlists, and text it to your friends, send it over Snapchat, send it over WhatsApp. Go crazy! Because I need the views. That's all for today. You all have yourselves a nice day. Don't know why I did that.